All right, everyone, welcome back into another NFL DFS video. Going to be touching on all the top preseason NFL DFS plays here for this Saturday night main slate, five game slate. It's pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so for this video, I'm going to go position by position here for you guys. We have some pretty straightforward plays on the slate. I do want to call out one thing real quick as well. So, right now, the nine to five lineup builder for the main slate is currently blank with projections. Basically, right after I post this video, I'm going to take an hour break here real quick. Literally woke up after posting last night's video for the early slate, and, and I kind of just have a headache and need to take a quick break, but I'll have that posted there. So it'll be five hours before lineup lock once those projections get loaded. I wanted to call that out, though, for anyone that is wondering, okay? That'll be uploaded with plenty of time for you guys there, but I, I need a quick break. Got a headache going right now. And guys, again, likes are definitely appreciated on this video, obviously spending a lot of time doing this, but that's for you. That's for us to be able to benefit. So let's go ahead and jump into the quarterbacks that we're looking at today. So we have a lot of situations where we're going to see probably a half of football for a lot of quarterbacks. Now, I do want to kind of tighten up that information. That is something that I'll touch on during the live stream there. But let's talk about the Jacksonville Jaguars. So Trevor Lawrence in this game is expected to get a series or two, uh, you know, whatever that means, right? It's just if they score a touchdown or you know, score on the first drive, they're probably not playing the rest of the game. So that means we're going to get Mac Jones probably playing about a half of football as well as CJ Beathard. And so that is definitely appealing to me now the issue that we're going to see is that the kansas city chiefs they're going to be playing their starters uh, and so maybe that makes me want to be on bethard a little bit more than mac jones but game is a little bit rainy as well so don't love that there uh from there we can go really into the tampa bay buccaneers so baker mayfield is not going to play in this one so that means we're going to get a lot of kyle trask and kyle trask is someone that did play decently well in the preseason last year i think he's going to be the player that we probably are going to be targeting the most here now there are going to be other options and maybe you're trying to gain an edge with may maybe targeting the slightly later seven o'clock game I, I don't think we need to do that though uh john wolford is also someone that can kind of scramble the football uh, you know, he, he was someone that we liked decently when he was with the Rams, kind of a scrambling type quarterback. And then from there, we actually look at Seattle as well. So Geno Smith is not going to play in this game. So that means we're going to get a lot of Sam Howell at quarterback. And if we're getting a lot of Sam Howell at quarterback, he is a play that we certainly want to be on. And the nice thing about Sam Howell is we can easily stack him with probably the top receiver play in the slate, which I do like. But at the same time, we do have P.J. Walker there. P.J. Walker is obviously a veteran, and we like that. Uh, from there, Easton Stick is reported to get a lot of playing time to see most of the action in the first half. So... We might not be locking in like a full half of play, but Easton Sticks, a, a quality backup. He is someone that can rush the football. I mean, look at these stats that we have from him. So we might get a base floor of around two points just with him rushing, and that can be pretty huge. Uh, from there, you know, I, I think some people are probably going to try to get to Spencer Rattler a little bit, maybe uh, Arizona. We're probably looking at a little bit of Ritter and Clayton Toon, but man, those two suck. <laughs> and so I don't really want to target those two. Um, man, that's... A terrible quarterback room besides Kyler Murray there. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump on into the running backs. Running back wise, we have a ton, a ton of players that we could be on, uh, really. And they're all kind of a part of the same tier. I don't, I don't have one player listed above the other. And that is another thing that I hope we get tightened up by the time lineup lock comes. Maybe a slight indication of someone playing maybe more of a full game rather than at least a half of football. And so we'll start with the Jags here. So Jalen Johnson is someone that has been getting casual hype out of camp. I don't want to like overextend him too much, but ETN, you, you wouldn't expect to get that much tank playing time. Tank Bisbee is someone that does need to play better, but uh, you have Robinson who's expected out. De'Aaron Hurst Johnson's a veteran. Gary Bright role is not terrible. So most of them probably staying away from them. Uh, looking at the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, Reese Samet is someone that has been getting some hype. I'll have exposure to him, but not too much. I'm mostly avoiding the running backs in that game, which if it's a rainy game, I could regret that. That could end up being like Baltimore Philly, uh, where really the two teams just ran a lot. Don't exactly like that. I'm fading that that much. Sean Tucker and also Bucky Irvin are two players that make logical sense to get a lot of playing time. Bucky Irving, obviously the rookie running back there, he's going to get a lot of hype out of uh, camp. It wouldn't be surprising to see him have kind of a Jalen Wright type game. Now, Sean Tucker was someone that I was excited about last year, had a little bit of uh, injury issues, but wouldn't be surprising to see him have a good game. At the same time, I don't think we need to go there too much. 
For the Bengals, not much there right now. That could change. Uh, for the Niners, I do like a decent amount here. Jordan Mason has apparently been pushing for the RB number two spot, and I think it's pretty awesome here for the... I shouldn't say awesome. That's terrible. Uh, but I think it's a good spot for us because a lot of the Niners running backs are banged up in this game. So CMC, we know he's not going to play. Elijah Mitchell's banged up. He's not expected to play. Uh, Garendo is banged up. He's not expected to play. Patrick Taylor's basically a no one. They signed Matt Breida. Keyshawn Vaughn is still there as well. But that typically means that we're not going to see those players a lot. And so one of my favorite running back plays is Cody Schro Schrader. And he is someone, Missouri running back. He kind of does everything right, if you will. He's kind of a grinder. He's kind of a preseason uh, running back type. So he's going to be one of my favorite running back plays just because logically speaking, it makes sense for him to get a decent amount of work. Now, the issue with the Niners is we do tend to see them kind of spread out their production running back wise. You know, I mentioned all my favorite running back plays probably for the week were last night. And that ended up kind of happening because we had a lot of teams that tendency wise tend to kind of have a workhorse running back and that is what we saw yesterday and so i'm a little bit worried that we don't exactly have that on the site but again i don't mind jordan mason from there tennessee titans guys this is a good spot for us so just how much is tony Pollard going to play just how much is tajay spears going to play if they play a lot they're going to be pretty interesting but i think it makes a lot of sense to get hessen haskins a decent amount of work in this game he is someone that can pop he is someone that is a strong football player he's someone that had a good preseason last year so i do like him and i don't mind the idea of like double dipping with these two if we can get maybe 10 points a la Julius Chestnut and Haskin. I'm certainly excited to do that. Both of those two players had a good preseason last year. Now, we might not want to do that because we do have other spots where we are getting some decent running back plays. We had George Halani, who has apparently been getting a decent amount of hype out of camp, and he is someone that is expected to get a lot of work in this game as well. You got McIntosh there. He's kind of just a guy. You got Kenneth Walker and Zach Charmonade, who are not expected to play. And so I kind of like going with the the rookie running back that has been getting a decent amount of hype out of camp. I don't think that's a terrible idea to go with. That being said, we have some other spots that we can get to running back wise as well. Uh, the Chargers are a guessing game. Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins not expected to play. That does leave us a lot of opportunity at the running back position here for the Los Angeles Chargers. But to me, the question is, which one do we want to be targeting? I think a lot of people are going to talk themselves into Vidal. If you guys are doing a lot of best ball drafts, people are talking themselves into Vidal. You got to remember, he is not that much older or younger than Isaiah Spiller. Isaiah Spiller is like six months older. And he's kind of looked good. He had a good preseason last year. Yeah, Jared Patterson, who's a great pass catching back for Washington. A lot of the time, people were excited for him. And I'm still excited for him. He's going to be one of my favorite running back plays. Then you got Elijah Dotson. Guys, Elijah Dotson on film from what we have seen. And this is based off the preseason. Don't get me wrong. He's better than Vidal. So it's weird that I think Vidal is going to be kind of chalked just because, again, the fantasy football community wants to make him a thing. And we haven't seen that much hype out of him out of camp. And I think Dotson kind of fits more of the mold of what this coaching staff would like. But at the same time, it's all a guessing game. I'm probably going to have 10% Vidal, 10%. Spiller, 15% Patterson, and 10% Dotson. Not going to go too crazy there. Saints-wise, the one player that's popping up a bunch was the former Buffalo Bills running back, Jordan Mims, who has had a good preseason in the past. He is someone that I like a decent amount on this slate. I'm going to get, he's going to be one of my highest owned running backs. Now, do I like him more than these three? I mean, probably a little bit more than uh, Halane. So yeah, probably get into him a little bit there. And then for Arizona, I think there is a decent expectation that Trey Benson is going to get some work in this game, but uh, with James Conner not playing and Amari DiMarcado out, there is a lot of playing time available here as well. Again, probably going to have 15% Trey uh, Benson and then just go 5-5-5 five, five, five for the rest of the players here. Let's go ahead and jump into the receivers and we can actually stick with the Arizona Cardinals. We'll do this reverse order. So Xavier Weaver is really the only player that I want to get to for the Arizona Cardinals. He has been making some plays in camp for the Cardinals. He's a former Colorado uh, college receiver. He really stood out for them. Uh, I think he actually is a little bit undervalued. He's an undrafted rookie free agent. He kind of stands out to me. And with the crowded room there, it is a guessing game. We probably don't want to go too crazy there. I think we're going to get better receiver plays at a bunch of different spots as well. Um, one of those spots is actually going to be here for the Saints. They're very banged up at the receiver position, as you guys can see on the screen already. We got Puka Nakua's brother on this slate, Samson Nakua, and he's apparently been standing out as well. I wish we had a direct quarterback that we could stack these players with, but he is someone that has been standing out. The question is, do we want to go more of him or more of Calvin Austin or Kevin Austin, who has apparently been standing out in camp as well? 
And so that's my biggest question. I might go with Austin. Austin is someone that did stand out last year in preseason a little bit. And with how banged up they are, I don't mind that play. I don't know if we need to force that, though. I, I think my strategy is going to be to stack a lot. Uh, Quentin Johnston for the Chargers, we probably want to get a little bit of exposure to. He's someone that does need to have a good camp. Um, I do want to call Jake Bobo. We know that the starting receivers for Seattle are not going to play. So JSN, Lockett, and also DK Helmet swinging Metcalf is going to be out. If you guys didn't see that clip, apparently he swung a helmet at a teammate. Uh, but Jake Bobo is kind of the clear-cut play here. He was a preseason stud last year. He's expected to play a decent amount in this game as well, continue to develop his skills. The former UCLA receiver is kind of a standout. He's going to be someone that is going to be easy to get to. Now, I will call out uh, Young is someone that has been a little bit banged up through them for them uh, throughout his years as a Seattle Seahawks player. He is someone that doesn't need to have good camp. I don't hate him, but at the same time, don't know you go crazy with it. Two players that I tend to get to in the preseason, at least throughout the years thus far, has been Kyle Phillips, who will get a decent amount of targets. He's someone that can get open. He's someone that's always been kind of a preseason hype type guy. I do really like him uh, on the site. I don't know if we need to go crazy with him, but I do like him. Then Mason Kinsey as well. He's someone that is basically Kyle Phillips 2.0. Those are two players that can get open early and often, and you know sometimes they kind of provide a nice uh, security blanket for those quarterbacks. Receiver-wise for the Niners, it, it, there's one player that really stands out to me, and that's actually going to be Ronnie Bell. So Ricky Pierce saw is a little bit banged up. So is a player that I probably would be on if he was playing Jacob uh, Cohen. I'm not expecting Debo Samuel. Brian Ayuk not going to play. Jennings not going to play. And so Ronnie Bell, if you remember this time last year, before Pearsall was drafted, a lot of people, and myself included, were kind of comparing him to a little bit of Debo Samuel that he could potentially pay, uh, replace him. Now, that obviously did not come true, but he is some that does stand out, and he is some that I do like a lot on this slate as well. Um, again, there's a lot of receiver plays that I like. That's going to be one of them. Continuing on, man, Cincinnati is kind of loaded here as well, guys. So Andre Yoshiva, I think, is going to be the receiver number three for this uh, Cincinnati Bengals team. All reports are that he is as well. Please be drafting him at the end of your best ball drafts. That's something I recommended earlier on this offseason. He is something that is still standing out in camp. And the reason I say it is because a lot of people are trying to make Jermaine Burton happen as a thing. And I get it. His film does stand out. Apparently, he has some character issues, I guess, off the field, whatever. The Bengals seem to manage that pretty well. But he is someone that I do want to get my exposure to. And so this is where... We're probably going to have to stack our quarterbacks with our receivers a decent amount. Uh, but Jermaine Byrne is someone that has been standing out. And then you got Kendrick Pryor there for the Bengals as well. Kendrick Pryor is someone that two years ago had a massive preseason, uh, went to the Bengals, or went to the Jaguars for a little bit, and now he's back with the Bengals. So that does kind of tell me something that they do like him. And he apparently has been standing out in camp as well. I do want to call one other player, Hakeem Butler. Kind of wish he was listed as a tight end. He was flirting around with being a tight end in this league. Went to the USFL, has just been dominating there. Now he's back in the NFL. It's weird. This is like the perfect example of um, in baseball, you got these players that maybe dominate in AAA, AA. Then they go to the MLB and they can't hit, you know, can't hit as well. That little difference in speed does matter, you know, in, in that example. That might be the case with Hakeem Butler, where the slight speed difference is just mattering there. And so he was someone that dominated in college football, has dominated on uh, a step down you know, playing wise, and he just can't put it together here. Definitely interesting there, but maybe we have some exposure to him. And then sticking with that game, actually, uh, McMillan is someone that's gaining a lot of hype out of camp. He's someone that does make a lot of sense to play a decent amount in this game. I want to call it Cameron Johnson as well. So again, we're probably going to be stacking quarterback here, right? With Kyle Trask um, and, and potentially John Wolford. And so we, we want to get some exposure here. And so this is where I'm probably going to go McMillan, but we could also just double dip there and, and go with uh, Johnson there as well. And then receiver wise for that early game, uh, again, with the rain in the forecast, I, I haven't looked into it too much, but I don't want that much. Uh, Justine Ross is someone that's still kind of standing out. You got Hardman there as well. Um, maybe Xavier Worthy gets a good splash play. I, I don't have a good feel for that game just yet, honestly. So last, let's go ahead and jump into the tight ends. There are really going to be two that we're targeting here. And again, I'm super interested to see what the ownership is <laughs> for the tight end slate. So Yesterday, kind of the clear-cut plays, we had Cade Stover and Tanner Connor. I was fully expecting those two to be about, I, I probably would have assumed Stover would have been higher-owned 
but I would have expected Connor to be at least 40% owned. Connor came in at 2% owned. That was extremely shocking, and I still don't know how he was in chalk. On my live stream, I mentioned it. I had like 300 people in there, and that takes up a decent portion as well for the NFL DFS community. And I know there's, you know, I'm the person that really popularized preseason NFL DFS, the OG in the space. I know there's other content creators that take what I say and use it. And so it's definitely strange that that's a tease there. <laughs> it was definitely strange that Connor was 2% owned as like the clear cut, obvious other option. And so that, yes, I teased it there, guys. Strange is probably the clear cut tight end play on the slate as it sits right now. Just logically speaking, it makes sense for him to get a decent amount of playing time uh, with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Again, I don't know if I exactly want to be targeting that game, but they are a little bit banged up. Uh, you got Evan Ingram there. He's probably not going to play that much. DeGuar is terrible as a Packers fan. I can say that. Strange is someone that does make sense for him to get playing time. Still a younger tight end. Uh, again, don't exactly love that game, but he's the most logical play. And then we have one other tight end play as well. And that's going to be uh, Dalen Holker for the Saints. He is someone that makes a lot of sense to get at least like a half of football. Our reports are indicating that he's going to get that as well. So um, maybe because it's like a later game as well, people might not get their exposure to him. So I think there's a lot of opportunity here on the site. But guys, that's going to do it here. Again, just want to remind you guys, if you want access to the 9 to 5 lineup builder, and I might be coming out with a write-up because it is a bigger slate on this slate, guys. Um, it might be coming out with like a direct lineup uh, write-up in terms of like, all right, these are the players that I'm on. I think I'll do that if I have enough time. Uh, but again, I will be doing the lineup optimizer projection updates right after this, uh, about an hour after this video is loaded. So be on the lookout for that. If you guys want access to that, it's available for $10 a month on the 9to5sports.com website. Gives you access to the lineup builder, the prop tools for preseason NFL DFS, as well as MLB, all the other various sports as well for prize picks, underdog, and pick six. Now, that's going to be all for today's video, guys. Make sure to give a like and subscribe. Seriously, guys, uh, this morning's video got a bunch of likes. It really helped the channel out. That video got a bunch of views, so I do really appreciate that, guys. So keep it up. Thanks for watching. Good luck. And as always, let's keep cashing.